I'll give this a try using smooth draw. This will be used in both classes. And you can see it's going to pick up pretty well on here. And I'm using smooth draw again because Sal uses smooth draw. Let's see how this thing works. All right. <clears throat> We're just going to introduce you here to this concept of a vector times a scalar. All right. So what does that mean? Well, a vector quantity has magnitude and direction. And a scalar quantity just has magnitude. And so when you wrote, multiply a vector by a scalar, you get a, another vector. If you multiply a scalar by a scalar, you get a scalar. A vector by a scalar, you get a vector. A vector by a vector, it depends. Sometimes you get a scalar, and sometimes you get a vector. And we're going to look at, in class, and doing a lot of this by hand, but let's look at this quintessential concept of using uh, vectors on a plane of different colors. So I'm going to try to do that right now. I'm going to make my vector red that red there it is okay so there's my boat there and there's my boat there and let's start with this that boat position is at p1 and this boat position is at p2 you may think as those as only as dots but in reality in reality those dots are defined from some spot here zero 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 if in the th you're in the three coordinates and if I'm going to call this these are boats so I'm going to say this is X and Y if they were in 3d space I might say this was Z but zero 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 I'm going to say time is now more or less or beginning at time zero and pressure is absolute all right so the reality is, even though you think of these points as points, in all reality they are vectors. I'm going to try my darnest to draw a vector one there, and a second vector there. So in reality, those points, you may think of them as points, but they are vectors. So, all right, so that's a starting point. Now, that's a location vector. These are typically called R sub 2 and R sub 1. Those are location vectors. Now let's assign a velocity vector to each one of those. And I'm going to assign the velocity vector that one. I'm going to have to change the color a little bit better. All right. That has a velocity vector there. And this has a velocity vector of something like that. Now what we have to realize that when you have a scale on this, you can have a different scale for each vector. So you could have this equals one foot per second. And if we go back to the red, close to the red, this is one foot. We even could have another vector let's say that we'll make that blue another vector that's an acceleration vector so you can basically have lots of different vectors and I'll put that down and we'll make this one foot per second squared and usually you might put these flipped the other way so what you can be doing over time is you realize that for some time or delta time equals one, what's going to happen? Well, the time, the scalar is one. So you're going to multiply, if you're starting with your initial velocity here, you're going to multiply this by one if it's a constant acceleration, not beginning at zero. And what you're going to get is you're going to get this acceleration times time vector 
scalar equals an acceleration vector, I'm sorry, equals a velocity vector, and now we're adding two velocity vectors together. And so what you get, your new at time t equals 1, your velocity vector becomes this plus that. And so now your new velocity vector is going to be this. That's at time equals 1. This plus this equals that. At time equals 2, you're going to have to add then another one of these. And then your velocity vector looks like that. At time equals 3, the same bit. So you have changing velocity vectors. So what we saw, let me do the same thing here without an acceleration vector. So let's say there is no acceleration, it's a velocity v. Well, at time equals 1, the position vector is going to be the or initial position vector plus velocity times time, remember velocity times time is going to also be a vector quantity, but that vector quantity is a radial distance and so our basic, if you would, if there's anything basic, our basic position vector is right there. So let's see if we can do file new here and get you to remember that the integral of a dt from 0 to time t equals the velocity, your change in velocity. So more or less if you get an acceleration curve and it's a straight line from time 0 to t and the acceleration is a, the change in velocity is the area times the time. If you have, instead of an acceleration, magnitude, you have time, and this is velocity, you take the area under the velocity time curve, and what you get is V times T, and that is equal to R. In other words, a, a, a vector, and this is equal to a velocity vector. And so this combination of integral calculus, if you would think about it that way, and adding and multiplying vectors on a plane will get us to this very typical navigation problem. So let's see if we can do this. Once again, we'll go File, New, No, and let's put our, keeping in our brains, we don't have to draw the radial vector. There's position P1, and there's position P2. And I want to say at time, whoa, hit the wrong button there. At undo, edit, undo. This is again can't smooth draw. This is position one, this is position of boat one, this is position of boat two, at time equals zero, at time equals zero. Position one at time equals zero, position two, boat two at time equals zero. And let's say at where will they be at time equals three seconds. Well, it that all depends. Perhaps this has a velocity vector of something like that. And perhaps this has a velocity vector of something like that. Remember, once again, I'll show you one last time that this position vector has to be defined from some coordinate system. I'll put the coordinate system there, x, y, right, and of course time equals zero as datum, and pressure, and temperature, which we don't really need, but we want to be aware of those. And we have this initial vector, right, r sub 1 at time zero, and another initial position vector, r sub 2 at time 0. And what, what's going to happen now? Well, we're going to have to multiply this vector times 3. Velocity times 3 
is going to be a delta R. So it's going to move one, two, three. And so our, sec our position vector at time equals three is right there. So that's the position of one at time equals three. And by the same token, over the three seconds, this is going to be move one, two, three, one, two, three. You have a new position vector here, position of two at time three. Essentially, what we've done here is we have multiplied a vector times a scalar to get a vector but the vector has different units. The units of this vector are perhaps feet per second. When you multiply feet per second times seconds, you get feet and you get this vector here. You're going to do this with different colors, but what you now have is a new <coughs> position on both of these. So remember, a vector times a scalar is a vector. A scalar times a scalar is a scalar. A vector times a vector, it depends. Sometimes you get a scalar and sometimes you get a vector. But remember that units count. Remember that, in effect, we can put both integral calculus integral calculus and basic vector work and I'll say manual for now we can put all that together to deal with all kinds of problems in engineering we start with this concept of R position R dot change in position with respect to time and our double dot change in position with respect to time with respect to time or the change in velocity with respect to time this is acceleration this is velocity this is position we start with that concept but we quickly go forward to forces and torques and everything else so this concept of getting out your straight edges and a set of dividers and multiplying this out. I'll just kind of see if I can draft it out or use the full 15 minutes. If I wanted to multiply that, use that as a set of dividers there. If I want to multiply that vector by three, what I do is I just let draft a big long vector here, big line, and then I just take this one, two, three. Now that's that vector multiplied three times. Now if I multiply velocity times just the number three, I get more velocity. If I multiply by the time, I get a position, a change in position or a delta R vector. All right, so we're going to go ahead and edit new, no, and we're going to remember finally, which I showed a few of you, when you're going to do a dot product of two vectors, a vector and another vector with a dot product, the graphics looks like this. The dot product of that vector and that vector, you, what you do is you take a projection of that vector upon that vector, and you take basically this distance times the whole distance. Mathematically, and you don't really want to do that, if you do this projection, the value turns out to be something like that. But we really don't want to do it that way. So that is the value, but a dot product of a vector and a vector but we want that as a scalar, so it does not have directions. We will go into what a cross product is graphically, but I'll use these last couple of minutes. Last minute, that's a vector, and that's a vector to do a cross product. It is going to have a direction. Its magnitude is going to be that, the area of that, and its magnitude will be into or out of the board, out of the plane of the two vectors. So we'll talk about how we do that when we're doing it by hand. But I want to put this out so you can get a general idea. We'll work a little bit better on laying some of this stuff out, how this interface works, what it looks like. And remember, we're going to more do this in, on a board. Uh, and as I capture these, it will be on an actual physical board in physical space. Thanks for listening.